Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn to Code with Anjali. So today we are going to have our lesson number 2 for the complete course for IP session 21-22. So now we are going to do how to create a series. In the last class I told you what is Pandas library, then how we have series, data frames and panels in it. What is the basic difference between these two all data structures? But right now we are going to start with the first one that is series, which is a one dimensional data structure. So in today's class, we will see what a series is exactly, how do you create it and how can we print it on the screen. So very basic operation on series. So let's start. So as I told you, series is a data structure, although it's not an inbuilt data structure, it is a data structure which is provided in Pandas library. So if you have to use series as a data structure, you need to write import pandas as pd. So this has to be imported. I guess most of you would have installed pandas by now. I told you in the last lecture that how to install pandas, right? So in case any of you is facing problem in installing pandas, just let me know. I'll try to figure it out. And now when you have to create a series, what do we do? We write import pandas as pd. There is a predefined function called series with s capital. Python is case sensitive. So make sure that you use the cases properly. The basic syntax. Syntax means the rule of writing a statement. So basic syntax would be you have to give name of the series object. So whatever name you want to give, that's totally your choice. It should be a valid identifier. And then I have to write the alias name, which is PD. So I can write PD. If I'm not using alias, I'll be writing the complete word that is pandas. So PD dot series S capital. Okay. And it is series. So PD dot series. Then you have to start the round bracket and I have to provide that what data I want to put in this. So I can write data is equal to and I put a list of values here. There are various means of creating series. Right now we are creating it using a list, right? We would be creating series using dictionary and using numpy arrays and everything. But right now we are creating it using list. So we'll write data is equal to list of values, comma. You have an option to provide the index like we have list tuples and strings in Python where the index starts from zero by default. So the thing is with series by default, the series first element is at index zero, then one, then two. But if you don't want it to be zero, one, two, if you want it to be something else, then that something else has to be given in a form of a list with the index attribute. So these things which you write within the round brackets like this data, this index, these are called attributes of the series, right? So these are your attributes. Another attribute you can give over here is D type. D type stands for data type. By default, series will pick up the data type of its own, whatever the values you have taken accordingly. But if you want to specifically tell that it has to be integer or float or whatever, so you can specify the D type over here, right? So these three things can be given. It doesn't say that you have to give all these three things. These three things can be given, but the must thing is the data part. I must provide the data for which I have to create the series. Index is optional. D type is optional. It would be taking its default values if I don't pass anything. I'll show you how. For example, I want to create a series of uh, any random five numbers. Okay. So let's say how do we create a series? This is my pie charm. I'm going to click on file and then I'm going to make a new file here, right? So this is your block here. Yeah, you want to make a new file. So we are going to add a new file here. So right click, go to new and I'm going to create a Python file. So this is my first program. So I just give it a name as S1, let's say. So I have already a number of programs here. One more program is added named S1. If you want to make all together a new project, so first you should create a project and then start working in it. So in S1, the first thing I'm going to write is import pandas as pd. So import pandas as pd. I have imported it. Now I want to create a series and let's say I give the name of the series as S1 and I write pd dot series. So PD dot series and then you give round bracket. So you have to give the data by default data is none. So no, I have to give the data. If I leave it, then it will be an empty series. It won't be having any data in it, but we must have 
some data right and you can see all these attributes all possible attributes are listed here then we can give index we can give d type we can give a name to the series the name to the series is a different thing and the identifier name is a different thing right so we could provide all that but right now i just want to provide data so i write data is equal to and i give any five numbers right and i want to print this series right now over here so this is your simple code save it and then execute it once you execute it you get this answer so you can see your first number is 67 that is coming at position 0 your second number was 3 that's coming at position 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 it is one dimensional it is coming in one dimension okay it is all same type of value so we have d type as in 64 that says it is homogeneous right so homogeneous means it contains all similar type of values if you give a value of some other type here let's say you give something like this so practically it won't give you an error it will work but theoretically it's not allowed so here it's going to work and you can see the change in the data type it's not coming as in 64 anymore it is coming as object because object is the base data type in python so if you are not able to categorize anything into any data type we can say it's an object right so it comes under the category of object but theoretically we must have values of similar data type so this is one thing i hope this much is clear another thing this data is equal to is optional you can just write this also so even if you just write this you're going to get the same thing so if i write data is equal to list you get the same thing if you don't write data is equal to you still get the same thing fine so it's up to you whatever way you want to write it so this is one thing another thing is index it is taking index as 0 1 2 3 4 i don't want to take that index i want to give index of my own so i want to give index like a b c d so i give a then i give b c d and e so this is how i've given the indices so i've given indices and now i execute this so you can see instead of 0 1 2 3 4 the index is coming as a b c d e right and the integer type is taken by default but i want it to be taken as float so i write d type is equal to float save it and if you execute it now you can see that there is a point zero attached with every number and your numbers become float now instead of integers so we can use all these attributes okay we can use all these attributes right here to change the different behavior of a series so we can create a series like this then you can also access the series elements by their index like this is completely printing the whole thing the whole series i don't want to print the whole series i want to print the third element so i write here that third element in the series is so third element in the series is which one it is s1 c right a b c that would be your third element so if you're going to run this it will print third element of the series is 55.0 right if you want you can modify it as well because series is data mutable data mutable means mutable means you can modify hai na? so we said we did that series are data mutable but their size immutable so they are data mutable that means you're going to put some index and if you want to change the value it was three i want to make it uh let's say i want to make it 120 so i put 120 on this and after that we want to print the series again so we write print s1 again and i want to show it so if i display it here you can see that it is changed to 120 right so this b is changed to 120 so that is how we can fetch as well as we can modify this particular process is called indexing a series so indexing means that with the help of an index you can fetch the value with the help of the index you can modify the value so i can fetch also i can modify also with the help of the index given in the series we can change this index anytime we want if you want to change the index i can check it change it again and for changing it again you just need to write s1.index attribute 
is equal to you give some other set of values like you want uh, P Q R S T right and after that you print S1 and save it run it so you can see the indices are changed it's P Q R S T if you want to check the name attribute, if you want to see the name of the series, like I write s1.name, by default it will be none because we didn't give anything for the name. So by default it will be none. So I want that we should rename it, we should give it a name because this is a question which CBSE has provided in the sample paper last year that you have to change name of the series. Now how would you change name of the series? I can change the name by writing s one name is equal to sample. So if I write s1.name is equal to sample and now I run it, so you would see that instead of none, the name of the series is coming as sample. So what we did, we did how to create a series, how to give a set of values in the data, then how to give its index, how to give the data type and if in case you need to change the name of the series, which is a logical name inside the programming part, if you want to change that name, you can use s1.name for that. Clear? I hope this much is very much clear to you. Now you would be remembering a thing called range. We have a function called range when we study loops in 11th. Remember? How many of you remember range? Write in the comments below. So write quickly that how many of you remember how to use range. So when we write for i in range 6. Now if I write for i in range 6, that means this will work for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 times. So basically range is generating a list of numbers. Now range can be used in different ways. In range what we can do is we can simply give the end that is the stop. In that case it will generate numbers from 0 to n minus 1. The other option is you give a start and you give an end. In that case it will be generating numbers from start to n minus 1. For example if I write range 3 comma 7 I will be getting numbers like 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be the set of values we get from here. And if you give a step, we can also have like start, end, and then step, right? So if you have given range 2, 11, 2. So it will be 2. With a step of 2, we get 4. With a step of 2, you get 6. Step of 2, you get 8. Step of 2, you get 10. Then you get 12, but that is outside the range, so we stop. So we have to go up to upper limit minus 1. So we will be working on this step. By default, the step is 1. If you want it to be anything else, like 2, 3, 4, whatever. So you have to give it over here. You can also have it in reverse order. That is, negative step can also be given. Let's see. How does this work? <coughs> so if I have to create a series in this one, so I create like S2 is equal to PD dot series and inside this I write range. So range round bracket. I want the same thing 211 2. So this will generate a list. You can put data or you cannot. That is totally up to you. So if you put it, it's fine. If you don't, by default, it's data only. So we are going to print S2. I save this and I execute this. So you can see that we have got list of even numbers, 2, 11, 2. If you want multiples of 5, it depends still where you want to take it. So I want to take the first 5 multiples. So I take 5, 31, 5. So it will print from 5 to 30. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. If you want to have it in decreasing order, so you want to go from 5 to 1 in decreasing order. So this will not take 1. It will print 5, 4, 3, 2. So if we go like this, so we get the series so you can have it anyhow so we can use a range to create a series of a set of numbers which have a pattern if you don't have a pattern then obviously we are going to take the values themselves now another example could be i say that you have to make a series of students in your class now a series of students should be like this that their admission number should be taken as index and the name should be taken as value so your admission number should be taken as index and name should be taken as value. So how would you write it? You'll write import pandas as pd. You have to create s1 
and this question comes for two marks in the board exams right so mark my words two marks direct question to create a series so if you are able to create the series properly your two marks in your board exam 2022 are final so pd dot series and what are we supposed to do we have to write the data so data has to be the names so i write any name so it's be like ankit uh, rahul then i have rohit and chia something like that and then the admission number should be their index so index is one two three one two four one two five one two six so i've taken their admission number as the index round bracket close that is it so this is one main statement to create your series with names as the values and admission number as the index and then you are going to print it out and s is giving an error because i've taken capital s so name can be in any case but series has to be like this that s capital and rest of it small and now we are going to execute s2 so when you execute s2 you get this so these are your names these are your indices so if you want to print a particular index or you want to ask the user about the admission number i want to ask admission number and i ask like int input int input enter admission number so i'm taking admission number from user and I want to print name of only that student whose admission number is given. So I can write this and I save it. When I run this, I enter, I enter here 125 and 125 is what? Rohit, right? So that's how your series are created. That's how you can fetch the element using indexing. I guess it wasn't boring at all. You enjoyed creating series. So we will be performing many more operation on series like this. Today we have just done how to create a series. And as I told you, with every lecture, you will be getting some work to do. So you have to write the answer of these two small questions. That is, write the Python code to create a series storing um, state name as index and their population as value right so you have to create it and you should take minimum of four states one is this and then uh, you have to take let's say create a series uh, to have IPL team name as index and number of matches won as their data. So I will tell you in the next class that if I have to increase the number of matches won, how would we do that, right? So create these two series, write the code in the comments below, or you can also join the Telegram group and give your answers over there. You can follow me on an academy for uh, live classes. I do take number of live classes on an academy. So you can follow me there. We have plus batches, which are very much scheduled and very nice interface of online classes is there. Other than that, these are all free classes, which comes under the category of special classes. Anyone can attend these classes. Just use my code Anjali Luthra or Anjali Live when you come to an academy. And I have another channel, which is in Hindi named with same name, Anjali Luthra. So you can get your IPCS content and other programming language contents as well in Hindi on that channel. Links of all this is given in the description. So like the video, share it with all your classmates, all your batchmates, and I will be starting class 11th course also very soon since as you all know that 10th class boards are cancelled. So we are not going to wait further. Now all 10th class students are automatically in class 11th. So next week we will be starting with class 11th IP and CS as well. So do share the channel with your juniors as well. And by the time I upload more, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.